So instead of passing messages to and from threads, you can also have multiple threads access shared data. So let's talk about shared state concurrency, chapter 16, section three. My name is Ricky and welcome to the dev method. If you guys like what you see, go ahead and give this a thumbs up. Otherwise, if you wanna see more, go ahead and subscribe down below. And uh, at the end, if you have any questions, add them in the comments below, I'll do my best to answer them. So in the last couple of videos, we dumped threads. And uh, now we've gotten to that part where we wanna share the data between threads, but we don't wanna use uh, that uh, message passing mechanism. So to help us do this, let's talk about mutex. So mutex is short for mutual exclusion. They allow one thread to access data at a time. A thread asks for access to the data by acquiring a lock. A lock keeps track of who has exclusive access to the data. So the mutex is guarding access via this lock system. So two rules to the mutex. You must attempt to acquire the lock before you access the data. And when you're done accessing the data that the mutex is guarding, you must unlock the data so that others can access it after you. And therefore, the other threads also acquire a lock to access the data. So let's take a look at our first example of a mutex. So we have mutex coming from uh, the standard library, the sync module, and then you have here mutex. Now on line four, uh, we just have a simple variable m, and we have the constructor here, new, and we're just giving it a number for now, and that's stored in m. Now at line six, we start actually a new scope. So uh, here we have the lock that we're acquiring on line eight, and since we have that lock, it actually returns a lock result. And the uh, success of that is a mutex guard. So this number here is actually a mutex guard of whatever the type is that we put into the mutex to begin with. So in this example, that would be five. And after we get that mutex guard, then we actually can get inside by dereferencing. So we dereference using the uh, star, the asterisk there, and then we can mutate it and put a different number in there. But nobody else can mutate this at the time we are. The thing you don't see is that in between lines 10 and 11, since that mutex guard drops and goes out of scope, now other threads can actually access that data. And then we print out the data here. So let's just run this example and you'll see what I mean. Cargo run. All right, there it is. There's our mutex and it has the data. So the mutex, it already implements the debug trait. So that's why we're able to see some of this output here. Now let's share the data with multiple threads. So here I've expanded the example we just had. And the main thing here is instead of creating a new scope, uh, line eight starts here with a for loop. And what we're gonna do is we're going to spawn threads. And then we're gonna take these handles, push them all into a vector so that we can keep track of them. And then we can wait around to join them at least all of them here on line 18. And then we'll print out what the result is uh, from the lock. We'll acquire another lock from this main thread here and uh, unwrap it, see what the result is. So you could probably see um, from here, we're trying to mutate the data on line 12, but uh, there is something here that we might not necessarily have seen right away, but I have a little red squiggly. So we actually have an issue with this closure and how we're acquiring the data that's in here. And it actually spawns from counter. So let's run this and see what the compiler output error shows us. So cargo run. So we have here um, the counter does not implement the copy trait. So basically we're trying to take ownership of what's inside. So essentially what we're getting here is that Rust is telling us um, we've already moved this into the closure once because we're spawning a new thread and we're looping through this code. On the next iteration, we can't move it into the next closure. So in this case, if we want to like lift off the guards of the ownership rules in Rust, one of the things that we can gravitate toward to is RC. So we've talked about that in a previous video. So it stands for reference counting. Um, so I've tried it here and we actually run into a very similar issue. We are creating um, new access to or another reference with counter here. And that way, this counter now is referring to what's on line 10 and not necessarily what was from line six but we still have some compiler issues. So let's actually run this code and see what the issue is. Cargo run. All right, so here it says, um, so within this, this closure that it's talking about, uh, requiring a bound introduced by this call. So RC cannot be sent between threads safely. 
So RC is not thread safe. So notice here on line one, we got this RC from something called the RC module. What we actually need is something from the sync module, something that goes with the mutex so that we can do very similar operations as to RC. So first I'll do this and then I'll do arc. So this stands for atomic reference count. So here, just change these both to ARC on both lines there. Now, I don't have any red squiggles, but does this code actually run and pass the compiler check? So let's actually do that now. Cargo run. There it is. Result is 10. So we basically did an iteration on our number, and that number started out as 0. And we've done this in a thread safe way because we use this thing ARC, atomic reference count. So a couple things to be aware of. Uh, this all comes from the same content that we've talked about before with uh, reference counting. So if you have strong references, this type of strategy doesn't necessarily protect you from that. And another thing to note is that if we're using the mutex, we actually have this at a risk of causing deadlocks. So I found here in the documentation, which you can look up for um, mutex here, and uh, it actually tells us here, it's even more important here than in threads because uh, we join the threads after that. So if we do not drop the mutex guard, a thread could be waiting forever, uh, causing that deadlock, and that's no good. So that would be a bad thing. Don't want that. So there you have it. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, please review chapter 16, section 3 of the Rust programming book, and it's called Shared State Concurrency. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Um, also subscribe if you want to see more just like it. Otherwise, have a good one.